I know I keep saying this, but I'm just going to... This is going to be like the last review, I promise you. Probably not, but what the hell. Yeah, I've... As you all know, I probably... I like comedies. I mean, not Family Guy or American Dad or Simpsons or things like that. Even though I do watch them, I don't particularly think I find their comedy a bit... As funny as it were, but I do like a lot of good old British comedies like One Foot in a Grave, Only Fools and Horses, Dad's Army, Morecambe and Wise, The Goodies. And in the subtitles of today's review, The Vicar of Dibley. Now, The Vicar of Dibley is basically about Geraldine Granger, who is this, who is the first female vicar of the village of Dibley. Now, I just want to make it quite clear that this was set during a time when women were allowed to become vicars in the Protestant churches and that sort of thing. And when she arrives there, basically everyone is kind of like against her, but then they decided to just give her a chance and then she actually becomes the best vicar the village has ever had. And yeah, that's basically the story. I mean, she... Of, you know, her played by, she's been played by Dawn French and she does a brilliant role as the vicar. And yeah, that hardly anything else to say about it apart from the characters. And they're all kind of like odd balls now and then, that sort of thing. And one of them is, her uh, virtues is, is Alice Tinker, who is basically a child trap trapped in a woman's body as no other way of describing me. I mean, she's always, she believes in Easter Bunny and Father Christmas and she's always doing like these childish things now and then and she's also quite stupid as well and she actually believes that, you know, the Wombles are real and that sort of stuff and that all. Oh. And I remember one episode where, you know, she's bugging Geraldine, asking her where she's going, and Geraldine just turns to her and goes, oh, I'm going to Narnia. And Alice actually believes her, and then she, like, you know, Geraldine basically pushes her into her cupboard and locks her in so she can go and do whatever she needs to do. And throughout the entire thing, she's basically going around going, asking for Mr. Tumless. If you know the line of Witch and the Wardrobe, you probably know who I'm talking about. The other characters are okay at best. I mean, first of all, there's David Horton, who at the beginning, in the first series, actually hated the fact that Geraldine, that, that the new vicar is a woman. I mean, she, he makes it quite clear in the first ever episodes, and throughout the entire first series, he's been trying his best to get her fired, basically. I mean, he's constantly attacking her, not physically, but, like, verbally and that sort of thing, and she, he's, he's always, you know, constantly looking for ways of, like, ruining her image, basically, that sort of, that sort of thing. I don't know, basically, I don't know, but... But then he kind of, like, you know, accepts the idea, and then over the course of the show, actually has some character development, and at the end, he uh, he's actually proud to have a woman as his vicar and yeah there's actually one episode where he actually does fall in love with her and propose to her but because of a dream they both have they decided to call it off and then there's like other episodes where he actually does stand up for her and like you know take her side and most things as well and I don't know they say yeah he's a gentleman farmer and he has, like, a lot of animals as well. But we don't actually see his farm at all in the whole show. All we do see is his grand manor house, where he lives with his son, Hugo Horton. Now, Hugo Horton is the same as Alice. He's childish, dim-witted, and he has difficulty understanding situations most of the time. But he does actually stand up for himself most of the time, like, you know. But the fact that... But there's, like, this, like, this... Facts that... 
that he has been bullied by his father throughout most of his childhood. Like, you know, David's always been, like, mean and horrible to Hugo. And, like, you know, there's like, this one episode where he proposes to Alice and... In the same episode, David absolutely doesn't like the fact that his son's dating Alice Tinker. He is against her, has always been against her, and will likely just get her fired, basically. And he basically, like, stand, basically, like, there's a scene in the second series, first episode, basically, where he basically, like, stands in front of him going, if you continue look going, off, going out with this Tinker twerp, you are no longer being in this house. You are no longer being my son. And as this new will I've written down to test, you will have nothing. And then there's the, like this pause. And then Hugo basically looks his father straight in the eye and says, On the contrary, sir, I will have everything in the world at my desire. And that's it. He stands up to his father. Now, originally when they filmed that scene, the audience exploded. They were applauding and cheering for him to finally stand up to his almost self-bully of a father. And then basically afterwards, like, you know, the, the director basically turned to the audience and said, like, we're going to have to film that again, but this time, please do not applaud. So they filmed the scene again, and then it was just, it's just that, with silence. Apart from Geraldine, who was there for that, the entire thing, basically, like, you know, just like a silent cheer for him, and the audience sort of laughed at that, basically. And that's it. He, that's it. Hugo and Alice get married and have a child, and, ha well, several, ten children to be precise, five boys and five girls, mainly because they have absolutely no idea how condoms work. The other character... Are there any other characters? Oh, yes, there's others. Like, during the whole episode or series, like, there's always these scenes where the ta several ta members of the town get together for, like, a council meeting, and they're just discussing, you know, what to do and that sort of thing, and they're always, like, a good fun to watch, basically. Always have a good laugh now and then. And the other members of the council, apart from Geraldine, David and Hugo Horton, are Jim Trott, Frank Pickle and Owen. Now, Owen is this far farmer who runs a farm and he's kind of dim-witted, but I don't know. There's like a lot of things about his character that... I rather not say it to avoid, you know, this video being demonetized, basically. And it's kind of like it's sort of like a. He's always like trying to chat up the vicar, and he's always like talking a lot of sexual and innuendo things and that sort of stuff. And hardly thing has to say about him, but apart from the fact he has sort of like a troubled childhood and that he has never actually been with a woman, like, you know, sort of haven't dated them, haven't fallen in love with one, haven't asked one to marry her, him, basically. Now, there's also Frank Pickle, who is the one who, like, takes the minutes. Basically, he basically writes down the events of the... events of the meeting and a sort of register type thing, and he's been labelled as one of the most boring people in the entire village that he like drones on and on and on about it so, a special subject and everyone's really annoyed with this and tries to like, either stop him or try to ignore him and I just think that it's a bit mean to be honest I mean there's like you know the we found out his background story that, you know, his entire family keeps calling him boring, including his psychiatrist. And there is this bit where it finds out that Frank actually drove his parents to kill themselves. Like, he was, like, talking about... about, about sorry. He was talking to them about something, and then the way he describes it, 
in the way sorry in the way that he describes it is when they took each other hand in hand and leapt out of the open window and it was basically like during a bit where he said that you know thank you for everyone in this village to you know supporting him basically and that sort of stuff and there's also there's this scene in like you know in later episodes like the Christmas specials like <coughs> sorry that you know came out in the in two thousand and four and two thousand and six where he basically gets invited to Geraldine's you know tenth anniversary where it's been ten years since Geraldine took over the role as vicar of the church of Dibley and. He wasn't really going to go there because he even admits himself that he's boring and everybody probably doesn't want him to be there. But Geraldine then basically says, you know, look, why don't you just come along in, in despite of everything? And he actually does. And there's this bit where he, yeah, Geraldine basically asks him to give a speech and he actually starts getting out this piece of paper and he's, about, and he's basically like, you know, said i have basically written reviews of every single vi vicar of the village since the day i was born basically and there's this kind of like this bit where everybody in the entire room basically just sits down and lays their heads towards the side of the chairs and pretends to be asleep now that basically like got to me because i remember at school when I was told to like, stand up in front of a class and basically, like, you know, do like a. Let's sort of talk about a specific subject, the lesson we we were having a lesson off to that day. And I can always remember, like, loads of people in all the other classmates in. All the other, sorry. I can always remember all the students in the class, not all of them, but some of them just deliberately lay their heads onto their desk and pretended to be asleep. And he says, and the teacher, the teachers was always kind of like you know, just yelling at them to stop that, and it was absolutely sickeningly rude for of them to do it. But they just ignore the teacher and just continue to do it. Now, basically, I know how Frank must have feel every time he actually tries to talk about that sort of thing. And yeah, but to be fair, then in. To be fair, he actually kept the review short by saying, uh, I have made a list of all the vicars of the village since the day I was born. I've reviewed all of them. But then, but then he kind of like, you know, says like, you know, but out of all of them, you, Geraldine, are the greatest out of all of them. And that's it. That's basically it. And another character in the village is Jim Trot. And... The only way to best describe him is kind of like a divra, and yeah, I mean he keep, when he likes talking, he's like constantly going no 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 yes. <coughs> uh, sorry, I don't know why I keep coughing lately. Yeah, yeah, Frank, uh, Jim Pick, uh, Jim Trot. That's it. Jim Trot's always this. Divra who keeps constantly repeating no all the time and it's because of this like you know high comedic hijinks ensues that you know he was once on count that <coughs> deal no deal program and when he was asked whether he should deal or no deal he's basically like he tries to say he tries to say deal but instead it comes out as no 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 deal and of course, he lost that game basically. Oh yeah, he has this. He has a wife who only appears in one episode that does the exact opposite. She basically goes, "Yes, yes, 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 no." <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to have to get a drink of water. I'm sorry about that. I'm just getting a drink of water. And yeah, that's he and Frank Pickle have this sort of friendship going on and that sort of thing and. When Jim's wife left him, they kind of like moved in together, basically. I think that's what happened, I don't know. And the last character I'm going to be talking about is Letitia Cropley, who's been played by Liz Smith. 
and she's the, she only appears in the first season, I mean series, because in the Easter special her character passed away. And she was actually known for like experimenting with different types of foods, like I don't know, she bakes a marmite cake. She like starts breeding snails for her bread and butter pudding surprise and keeps like putting like, you know, weird toppings on pancakes like lard, fish paste and or liver. And I don't know whether she actually knows what she is doing. And it's just, you know, likes to see people's faces when they eat her food. Or she's basically kind of like, you know, trying to experiment with different types of foods and that sort of stuff to see what weird concoctions she can make. And, yeah, like I said, apparently she actually did play a big role in Dibley yet because... During Easter special, she confesses to the vicar that she basic she had a tradition of dressing up as the Easter Bunny during the night of Easter Sunday, I think, and basically like you know going around the entire village, village like you know hiding eggs in people's gardens, that sort of stuff. And it's kind of like this thing where she actually t asks Geraldine to continue her tradition and Geraldine does dress up as a bunny and actually does the delivering the eggs that sort of thing but then she comes across David Horson who who also promised her her to do the Easter bunny thing and he's actually doing all this and they're kind of like the kind of thing you know she just lost her memory and just asked them both to do it and they then come into the, the village centre and yeah, it turns out that she actually asked every single adult in the entire village to be the Easter Bunny. As a sort of huge joke. <laughs> but in any case, the characters are good and the the jokes are actually quite good as well. I would highly recommend that everybody actually goes and sees the actual Vicar Dibley itself. It's on Netflix and the only thing I didn't like is that it was... It was short-lived. I mean, they only did two seasons. Then they did... Then the rest was all just specials, like one-offs and all that sort of stuff. And there's also a lot, of continu there's a lot of continuity errors as well. Like, in one episode, like, you know, the final episode of Series 2, after Alice and Hugo's wedding... They appeared in the middle. They appeared in you know, like David Horson's living room, dressed up in, di I say diving gear, and saying that they're going to Barbados for their honeymoon. But in the episode after that, first episode of series three, I think, they actually said that they went to Turkey. Now, either that's a continuity area, or for some strange reason in the Vicar Dibley universe, Barbados is actually off the coast of Turkey. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, some of the episodes are kind of quite like as well. There's like one episode where, I don't know, the, the Vicar this basically goes to a radio station to get interviews about, you know, what's life like being what a woman vicar and Yeah, it kinda like it's one of those episodes where the fame and fortune of like the fame and glory has gone straight to her head and she basically starts seeing herself as this celebrity vicar and then it, this guy from a newspaper basically comes around the entire village asking everybody questions and then they basic <clears throat> the end result is that every everybody in the village is humiliated like there's the interviews in the paper have these like taglines that really basically insult them like frank pickles headline is this is the most boring man in whole of britain and owen's headline is this is britain's B.O. King and that sort of thing and 
David Horton actually does turn to her and say that you did deliberately, you allowed fame to get, go to your head and everyone, and because of you, everybody's deeply insulted and that sort of thing. But she does make it up to them in the final of the episode where they do this sort of gala type thing where each person actually does a performance in front of a live audience with Owen doing like this thing where he has like a keeps making a duck fart and Jim basically doing like no no Frank but that's it Frank's doing like these imitate impressions of people and that sort of stuff and Jim Trot for some strange weird reason does the full Monty. Yeah, he's seen the full Monty and he decided that for his act, he just strips naked in front of everyone. Which, well, how come he hasn't got arrested? I don't know. But in the end, in the end like, you know, Geraldine Granger actually does make it up to the entire village by performing a ballet with professional ballet star Darcy Bustle. I mean, I don't know if she's still dancing or not, basically. And another episode I particularly like is the one where Dibley has been allowed to do, have a radio show for one weekend. Everyone's basically, like, get, gets their own show and that sort of stuff. And it's got a lot of good jokes thrown in there as well. <clears throat> Now, also, like, you know, in the final in the final two episodes of the entire show, like the Christmas and New Year's specials of 2006, Geraldine finally ends up getting married. He, she comes across a guy who is an accountant who just moves to Dibley, and he does win her over, and in the end, they actually do get married. Which is like a, a good end to the show. Like, you know, a lot of other shows tend to end as well with a great big wedding and that sort of stuff. And, yeah, there's hardly anything else to say about it. I mean, I'm sorry I keep pausing now and then. It's just a, I did have a small dose of, uh, of I did have a small cold earlier, earlier on. And even though I'm better, it's, it's still lingering about. So I keep pausing and stopping and starting now and then that sort of stuff. And... Yeah, there's hardly anything else to say about the figure, do I mean, I like this show a lot. I would highly recommend everybody go check it out if you haven't already. And it was actually voted third as the third most popular British te comedy show in the whole of Britain. So, yeah, there's hardly anything else to say about this thing. Go check it out. It's on Netflix if you haven't seen it already. I highly recommend you go check it out. You would be laughing your heads off when you watch it. I would, I promise you. So that's about it, and I'll see you next time.